Okay, so next I'm going to cut some stretchers to reach between the two side frames in the four corners. And these will mostly be glue and tack points for the outside um, encasement, enclosure. So I'm going to make those out of the off cuts from where I cut the rabbit into the frame. And I've got four of them set aside here. I've got the stop block set to 17 and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those down to size now. Okay, my camera just shut off on me, so um, I'm going to recap real quick. This is the bottom panel. This is one of the side frames. And this will be one of the electrical boxes. This will house a, a normal wall switch, and it will serve as a cutoff to power for the entire internal system. So this will be facing down, because this whole unit will be suspended from the ceiling, so having it on the underside of this unit will be most accessible. So I've traced the outline of the box back here. I was just drilling a hole when I realized my camera wasn't working. So now I'm ready to cut that hole out for this outlet box with the jigsaw. Okay. This unit will snap up through here, this way, and we'll screw inside of this frame. Okay, that looks just about perfect. This way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is drill a couple of holes in this so that I can get my screwdriver bit through to access the short screws to run through here. Okay. That looks perfect. Okay, so now I think it's time to start connecting all the frame pieces so we can start putting this together. So I'm going to start off by aligning this one because this is kind of the most critical of all of them. Okay, so we're ready to glue up the frames, pieces, and the uh, enclosure panels. So let's get started. Now, before I put the back panel on, I need to put on these stretcher pieces. Now, these will not be attached mechanically to the frames, and I'm not worried about that because these are realistically just a glue and tack surface because this Luon has so much flex, and I don't imagine I could get that sealed very well. So this is serves no other purpose than as a uh, union. So I'm going to glue this stick in. Okay. So now we've got an excellent surface to glue to. We don't have to worry about these Luon joints flexing. 
Here is the rear panel. Looks excellent. And time for glue. This is the box for the switch. The hole's cut out, I drilled some holes in it. I drilled one a little higher, one was too close to begin with. So this fits in here. Just like that. And then I'm going to attempt to reach in here and drive the screws. Okay, so this is anchored in here. Again, this is the bottom that faces towards the floor. The fan unit will be right here. So the last piece I want to do is put a box inside that will have a regular single gang dual outlet in it. And I'm going to put that right up here. So once again, I'm going to try and drive these screws backwards. Okay, so there we have it. The switch is accessible from below as a kind of a safety feature. And then this outlet box right here is where we'll plug in the fan after everything's all set up. Okay, so now, once again, this is the bottom, and I've got my arrow on my front face frame. Make sure I get it oriented correctly, and that looks good. So, I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on it. All right, I'm sure that's three times more nails than I needed, but front is on.
Okay, so I've given the enclosure a coat of paint, two coats of paint rather. The blue one soaked it in pretty good, so it needed two pretty good coats to get some decent coverage. So I'm ready to move on with that. I'm collecting some of the wiring components to get everything hooked up. And then finally, before I move on, here is kind of a close up of the patches that I made to close up the holes in the fan body. This was aluminum flashing that I put in with some two-part epoxy. Now it's time to start wiring up the AC power feed. I'm going to work backwards from the outlet to the switch and then to the power cord. So I'll go ahead and get started with that. Okay, now I'm leaving plenty of slack in here like you normally would so that I could get the box out. I will later come back and staple this Romex into the side of the frame to secure it so it doesn't move loose. And I'll feed this back down in here for the switch. Okay, now we'll feed the power cord in to the box from the outside and hook it up. Now this is a leftover power cord that I had sitting around that I have no use for anymore, so I'm going to use it. I've already drilled a small hole in the back so that I can feed the cord in. Okay, so now that the internal wiring is done, I've got that. I got the covers on here. I had to put a little notch on it so it would fit around the frame. I've got the uh, staple in here in the middle. That's all closed up. I've got to be careful now of where I've set it down because the switch is sticking out the bottom. So the last part to do is wire up the fan motor. And before I do that, so that I can get the lengths right, I'm going to go ahead and mount the frame. Now uh, there's a very narrow flange around here that was punched with sheet metal screws where the, the rear grill used to attach and there's not a lot of material there to uh, run a screw through so what I'm going to use are these uh, they're lath screws and it's really just a, a wood screw with a fairly large kind of washer head or flange head on it so I think that if I run this into the wood and capture the flange of the or the the side of the fan here with the washer head as opposed to going right through it and do that several times around. I think that should be plenty to capture it. So I'm going to put some clamps on there and get it kind of locked in place and then start running the screws in. I do have it spaced up about three eighths of an inch off of the table here. It's taller than, it, than the fan is so I've got it kind of centered in that space so that it looks kind of even. I'm going to try and put one through one of these holes and see how that goes. Hmm. Well, that worked better than I thought it did, so maybe I'll just go ahead and use the original six holes that are drilled in the case. Uh, which are the mounting points for the original rear grill. So I guess I'll go ahead and start with those.
Okay, well, that went much easier than I thought. So um, that's attached now, and that's quite solid. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's the end of this part of the video. Thanks for watching, and please click the link below to watch the next section of video.